This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on successful launch of small satellite launch vehicle. The participants are Dr. Anand Sinha, former advisor, Ministry of Science and Technology, and Rajesh Lake, AIR correspondent. Mr. Sinha, SSLV is the new small satellite launch vehicle developed by ISRO to cater to the launch of small satellites up to 500 kg in low Earth orbits. Would you elaborate on what is the importance, according to you, of SSLV? This is a great achievement of which we have our scientists and engineers at the Indian Space Research Organization have achieved on 10th February 2023. The small satellite launch vehicle capability that has been demonstrated by this launch is something that we feel very proud about. Over the past many years, the mission for this has been working with many bright engineers and scientists working out how do you get this 34-meter tall, 2-meter diameter, three-stage rock up and precise enough to launch three small satellites in the right orbits, near Earth orbits. So there's a lot of engineering, a lot of design that is required by people at the ISRO. Second, that the people who have designed these satellites, the Earth Observation Satellite, EOS-07, the Janus, and the Azadi Sat, they have benefited so much in ensuring that these very lightweight, very small, mini satellites are designed in such a way that they'll be able to complete their scientific objectives and yet be portable enough to be put onto the SSLV and taken into orbit. So there's been a lot of work which has been done. These uh, three satellites uh, that have gone into the orbit, uh, let us know about uh, how this satellite, SSLV, which has been launched, and it carries up to 500 kg to low Earth orbits on launch-on-demand basis. Now, what is this launch-on-demand basis? Is it aimed to commercialize the small satellite uh, launches? Probably in the long run, it will become uh, commercial. But at the moment, I think it is still a developmental flight that we are talking of. The developmental flight, similar one, was tried in August 2022, and it missed marginally some of its targets to the engineers and scientists at ISRO to sit back and understand what are the shortcomings. And therefore, the development flight 2, which is what this one was, with modifications, and uh, they, it was able to function very effectively. So the, to be able to insert these satellites in their intended orbit requires a lot of precision. Uh, you, you have to run your uh, engines for fractions of seconds to be able to get things in the right orbit. And uh, that is a very precise job that when you uh, run it for only a few decimals of a second, and then you get your, you release your satellite at that uh, particular point. So it is uh, some 880.1 second later you have to release a satellite, or 900.1 second and you have to release a satellite. So these are very precise calculations of what you're going to do, and you're going to control it from your control room. A lot of technology, a lot of confidence is needed to be able to do this. That is why we will be able to offer this capability for launch of satellites in future. That is what I mentioned when it's on demand, that if there is a need for 600 kg or maybe 1,000 kg, we are today, we are talking about 500 kilogram low Earth orbit capability, and we have demonstrated it. Future mini, nano, and micro satellites will be probably demand we'll be able to launch them. The uh, small satellite launch vehicle uh, successfully launched three satellites, as we were discussing a while back, uh, into their intended orbits. In its second developmental uh, flight, the SS yes. uh, LVD2 vehicle placed EOS 07, which you mentioned about, Janus 1 and Azadi Sat 2 satellites into their intended 450 kilometer circular orbit with an inclination of 37 degrees elaborate on these three satellites that have been placed into the orbit. Let's talk about first EOS-07. EOS-07 has instruments which have been designed to measure millimeter humidity sounder and to look at the spectrum monitoring. So these payloads are part of the EOS-7. It's a new experiment that is being tried and this will help scientists to understand all these phenomena which are very, very important and which with the data that is missing. 
Janus was a technology demonstrator satellite. It is a smart satellite mission. It has payload, and they are looking at the onboard computing platform. There is digital twinning, and all this is in that very small phase that Janus One has. So they will be observing how it functions, and if it does, it will be something very good. They are calling it a modular bus. The Azadi. That is, I mean, of course, as I mentioned, part of the 75 years of India's independence celebration and Space for Kids, the startup in Chennai, who have been responsible for this, they have worked with 750 girls for designing the experiments, for then working out the instruments, and then for putting it all together. So there is this amateur radio communication capability. There is a measuring of a radiation level in space, and then to be able to demonstrate that the satellite structure is expandable. I think these are very important objectives, and it is very heartwarming that these girls who were involved in this have done such a beautiful job that the satellite was ready in time, and it has been launched, and it is already functional. So as you said, uh, EOS 07, uh, five, 153.6 kg Earth observation satellite was realized by ISRO and Janus-1, a technology demonstration satellite weighing 10.2 kg, belonged to Antares USA and uh, Azadi Sat-2, an 8.8 .8 kg satellite uh, was realized by Space Kids India by integrating various scientific payloads developed by seven fifty girl students across India. Now what is important here, uh, Mr. Sinha, is that Antares USA is now piggybacking on the satellites uh, developed by India. Earlier we were dependent on um, other countries. Now would you confidently say that India is self reliant when it comes to satellites uh, going into orbit? Definitely. The way engineers and scientists have honed their capabilities with every mission that they have undertaken, something which definitely gives confidence to ISRO and to all of us that we have adequate understanding of the requirements and we know what is it that we can do and how quickly we can do it. There are going to be benefits, international and national. I think, I mean, say, our scientists, our mission director, everybody involved, uh, deserves a huge round of applause for the way they have been able to do this within very limited time schedules. The moment a mission is announced, there are very strict uh, time schedules that are put. Um, there are very strict resources that are issued, and um, the manpower has to be, therefore, probably working around the clock to be able to achieve these. And uh, to do it, I think, definitely gives a lot of uh, confidence, a lot of pleasure, a feeling that, yes, you can do it. And that, I think, is okay. very, very important. Uh, Mr. Sinha, in its first developmental flight on August 7, 2022, SLV-D1 had marginally missed uh, to place the satellites. And thereafter, um, our scientists uh, implemented the recommendations made by the expert committee that analyzed the shortcomings of SSLB-D1 flight in which the VTM, the liquid yes, propulsion-based velocity trimming. trimming module that achieves the desired velocity for the insertion of the satellite into the intended orbit played a major role. What were the recommendations basis which the SSLV D2 was launched? Um, well, these, these are technical matters and which I'm sure they must have, uh, we will not be able to discuss it because they are not in the public domain. But it is important to understand that in development, in research, uh, we move from one stage to another. And if, if there is a learning to be done, it is done and incorporated in the stage next stage. So uh, the process of developing technology is this step. It is not something that you can suddenly jump a stage, just hope that it will work. SSLV is meant to be a low-cost uh, access to space. That means it is available from India to any and every country. We, we are developing a space port at, uh, in Tamil Nadu, which will be uh, developed as a capacity for launch-on-demand satellites. And uh, this is at Kurse uh, Karipatnam, likely to become area of a lot of activity as far as these low Earth orbit satellites and therefore these small satellite launch vehicles. There's a lot of planning that is already happening to ensure that uh, this comes up in time and uh, that will help 20 countries. 
to be able to do a lot of experiments with uh, these types of mini nano and micro satellites which are all being cost constant it is obviously shared with all the partners and the scientists who take benefit of the data that is generated are also going to be very happy that if they are able to get this data in time earlier the better they would be able to ensure that its application in communication in weather forecasting and mapping in agriculture whatever is available for use for each of us benefits now the union home minister amit shah congratulated the team after the launch and i'm a quote from his tweet kudos to team isro india creates history with the successful launch of the sslv d2 eos07 mission on the advent of its amrit kal the launch allows india to send up to 500 kg objects in low earth orbits paving the way for self reliance in space programs and this is what we were discussing mr sena while back that how india is going to be self reliant in all space programs henceforth now two of the points that i have for you related to the self reliance is that it has a quick or rather a low turnaround time so what is that and how this program facilitates uh, flexibility in accommodating multiple satellites the launch vehicle is a three stage vehicle uh, with the solid state fuels at two layer stages and a liquid fuel at the third stage and it has been designed in such a way that it is able to meet the requirements for a fleet of this duration and uh, therefore the isro is confident in saying that we will be able to do small satellite launches at uh, more frequently uh, unlike the larger uh, geostationary launch vehicles or the polar satellite launch vehicles which are much big and more monstrous and the space port that they are developing is also for that capability where they are able to then handle the so called launch on demand how many requests would be there and what will be the process of uh, accommodating all the demands is something which isro and the government will work out but it definitely augurs well for international and indian science and also the fact is that the sslv demands minimal launch infrastructure so as you very said it is very easy now for us to get into um, in the orbits or into space also because of the fact that we discussed that it offers low turnaround time you are right sir absolutely any congratulatory note from your side uh, mr sena that goes uh, to the scientists officer of course I, mean, i am so proud of our engineers and scientists who have done all this uh, speed work from days and months together uh, to be able to uh, come to the successful end of a mission is a feeling of great uh, satisfaction and uh, my you know, full good wishes to all of the people who are involved uh, and their families also because they are the ones who sacrifice a lot when um, the engineers and scientists spend lot of the clock time inside the laboratories and inside the workshops there's a lot of learning that takes place i'm sure there these lessons that they have learned the success that they have achieved spur them on to greater heights and we'll be there to cheer them and look forward to a lot of uh, good such opportunities to talk about So sure, Mr Sena and uh, along with this row we look forward uh, for catering to the increasing global need of launching smaller satellites into space. Thank you so much for your time with All India Radio. Thank you so much. You are listening to a discussion on successful launch of small satellite launch vehicle. The participants were Dr Anut Sinha, former advisor Ministry of Science and Technology and Rajesh Lake, AIR correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnstalks@gmail.com.